Teresa's of Hope is a nonprofit committed to inspiring a sense of community and well being in hospitals through the donation of athletic jerseys to be worn by patients rooting for their favorite team. In the past seven years, Jerseys of Hope has given out over 2,000 jerseys to lift the spirits of hospital patients. They have impacted the needy in four countries in 11 states. Please visit jerseysofhope.org to learn more. We're so honored to partner with Jerseys of Hope and be a small part of the large impact they make. To the unscripted podcast this is caitlin each episode my uncle aaron interviews guests that are living their lives unscripted the song you are hearing is the music from our dear friends tori and shauna you can find their music wherever you stream your favorite songs for now from his studio here's my uncle aaron you know when you talk about ohio and point guards pretty sure the two people that i'm talking to today. Their names come up pretty quick, both for the NBA and college and their careers. Mark, do you want to introduce our special guest today? Well, we're uh, we're blessed and honored to have Aaron Kraft join us today. And Aaron's a legend at OSU. And, uh, you know, I have to do a little bit of my homework being that I'm, you know, more of a Georgia Tech guy in college and and, uh, grew up in Oklahoma. But obviously when I was playing with the Cavs and realized how uh how big and how how much of a following osu had in in the ohio area but uh you know aaron had a great great career uh, at osu and i would say probably and aaron you're you're the guy that lives near columbus so you'd have to correct me on this but probably if not one of the most popular players to ever play there uh you know he's definitely one of them so Aaron, welcome, man. We're really thankful, man, you're joining the show today. I have a lot to talk about and just uh, talk hoops a little bit. But obviously, as we get toward the end of it, we uh, want to talk about faith as well. I know that's a big, big part of your life. And so, um, yeah, man, Aaron, I'll, I'll just let you kind of kind of get the ball rolling. It's, it's tough here. We have two errands happening. I was just um, thinking that. <laughs> but no, I, I just you know want to say thank you guys for letting me on. This is... Um, I mean, this is great. You know, being a, a ba- if you're a basketball fan, uh, everyone knows who who you are. I want to call you Mr. Price, but um, <laughs> yeah, please don't just, do that. I feel like I've known you long enough. Uh, you know, have thought about you for long enough that that's who you started out as. So, um, and it's just it's a really honor, it's a big honor to come on the show. Obviously, the other guys and uh, people you've had on the podcast um, are people that are um, really solid, just people, uh, but also have made an impact with their faith. So. Uh, to be with with that group, I'm excited, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about some fun things today. One of us should be AA Ron, and the other one should just be Aaron. You know, we could look that up. <laughs> I'll go AA Ron since I'm gonna stay out of the way. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let two two legends talk and kind of stay out of the way as best I can. Let's start at the beginning. I think for me, when I look at it, your games are so similar. You guys are so similar, and I think that's why you're so beloved in the state of Ohio is your grit, your toughness, your leadership. I mean, you just are both so similar and your faith and your character. And, you know, when I go down the list, I could just name so many things that you guys are very similar. And so in the state of Ohio, having the platform that you've had, let's just start with that. Your careers, what's it like in the state of Ohio being elevated to this place that you both were because of your games? Well, I can speak for me because I was, you know, kind of an outsider coming in. I think when I came to the Cavs, some people might have seen me play in college a little bit. We just, you know, I'm showing my age, uh, you know, Aaron, that, uh, you know, we didn't have all the ESPN 24-7 even, you know, to, you know, to the internet, mm-hmm. cell phones, all that stuff. And so you had to be a real basketball fan to kind of, if you're from Ohio, to know, you know, much about a guy, a kid coming in from Georgia Tech. But the thing I learned about, you know, the state of Ohio and the Cavaliers fans and is that once you perform and once you, they see how much you care and the effort, it's like you have fans forever and they're loyal and they pull for you. And I didn't even know much about the Cavaliers when I got there. I've shared that many times, but man, I, I mean, I loved my time playing in Cleveland and 
And to this day, I'm back up doing five camps in Ohio this summer because people like to see me come back and, you know, it's fun kind of connecting with the next generation kids that don't even know who I was, you know, till after the camp's over, but their parents have told them about me. So, Mm -hmm. um, it's just a unique in a lot of ways, you know, I go to different parts of the country. I live in Atlanta. I played at Georgia tech and I can walk around and hardly anybody knows, knows who I am, but you know, I go to Ohio and, and everybody remembers. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I'm obviously a little different. I, I grew up here. Uh, I've been here, you know, my whole life. So I've, I've been part of the Ohio state fan fan base for a while, especially with the football team and just my dad uh, being a coach growing up and that kind of thing. But um, one of the things coach Mata always said as like almost a recruiting pitch, uh, but once we got here too, he would always tell us, you know, if, if you give the university, you know, all that you have, and if you do it the right way, you will, you will have people in your corner for life. And it obviously it always just sounds like, you know, what you want to hear as a player and you're 18 right. and 19 and you know that it sounds good, but you, you don't really appreciate it until you're done. And obviously I'm, I'm done now, just kind of on to the next chapter of my life. But some of my, my favorite encounters with, with the patients that I get to run into are they talk, they want to talk about basketball. And I think one of the other really cool things about it is as a player, and I don't know if this is the same for you, Mark, but I remember laying on the ground after my last game, cause I missed the shot. Or I remember the game I had eight turnovers and we got beat by 30, um, these fans, they, they may bring that up, but they always want to talk about, man, that one time you dove on the floor, I was, I was right there or that one shot that you hit. So they always remember the highlights. And so that's, that's always fun to relive too. Um, and obviously being here, here in Columbus, um, the same thing happens, you know, kids that are about 10 years old, um, they, they have no clue. Um, <laughs> uh, but the parents, the grandparents, th- those conversations are a lot of fun. And, uh, they're trying to let their kids know, and uh, it's it's been great, and I'm I've been super appreciative of it because uh, again, I don't I don't think I I really thought about it until I was done, and, and coach was right. Yeah, it's 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 something. I think when you're in the middle of it, and I can speak to that when I you know went to Georgia Tech as well, uh, you know, as a college player. I mean, you show up, and I mean, you're 18, you know, 18 years old. Um, you're like, hey, this is pretty cool. You know, I'm getting to play, you know, college basketball. And and here I was, you know, here I was 5'11", 155 pounds when yeah. I showed up on campus. And it's like, okay, I hope I can just, you know, do well, maybe start one day. About, and then, you know, your career kind of takes off. And all of a sudden you go from that to people looking at you mm-hmm. and even kids trying to emulate you. Um, and I think those are the things initially that are pretty cool, but, and I can help, you know, I want to hear Aaron's perspective on this as well. Cause I've talked about it, you know, in my, with my career, but once you kind of become a hero to somebody or a, a star, it can affect, and you see it affect people in different ways. And Aaron, I would just kind of like to hear how, you know, how you dealt with that. And obviously I, I, I know from your background and your faith plays a big part in that, but just kind of how'd you go- deal with kind of going from a nobody, so to speak, you know, yeah. kind of a, and we have a lot of things in common. We were both kind of overlooked all, you know, grow coming up. We weren't highly recruited and yet we show up on campus and we were able to make a big impact on the court. And so that also opens up all the other things that come with it. And, I'd just like to get your perspective, kind of how you dealt with that kind of going from zero to hero, so to speak. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, was it a challenge for you to kind of, kind of deal with that at times? Yeah, I, I, every, almost everything you said really resonates. Uh, I, I remember early, very early on, uh, when I was a freshman, we coming in the summer and Jared was obviously the big name in our class, you know, um, highly recruited. And I just kind of hung out with him and, I remember early, uh, he, he was with a highly touted football player on the team. Let's just say that. And he did not want to give me the time of day. He did not want to say hello. He didn't want to dab me up. He just, he just thought I was with Sully. Um, and then we played at Florida the next day, like, or then that, that week, um, saw the same guy the, the week after we played him after I'd played a lot and we'd won. He instantly dabbed me up, 
started a conversation all on his own. And at that point, it like kind of clicked about how how much power there is in being at Ohio State, playing on the high level and playing on national television. Um, because obviously that he completely changed in a matter of like eight days. Um, and it's it's definitely hard. And I think early on for me, the biggest challenge was trying to stay true to who I was and who my parents kind of raised me to be. And um, as we talked, you know, who what does my faith say about this? I definitely struggled with trying to live up to the persona, the person that all these people thought I should be or who they even thought I was based on what they saw on, on a TV screen or uh, a five minute interaction in the locker room. And I definitely wanted to try to live up to that. And, and that was just, I realized it was just way too much pressure. It was way too much weight for me to carry. And um, for me, it just came down to, I was surrounded by great people and I would love to take credit for like me seeking them out. But honestly, you know, God really kind of just placed them there before I knew that I needed them. And one of those guys was John Diebler and um, a guy that worked with Athletes in Action here at Ohio State was was around all the time and they were just there. And then by the time I was older, you know, we purposely started seeking those guys out. And I lived with guys that that cared about the right things, would tell me what I needed to hear. Uh, and and that, that's ultimately, I think, what, what really helped. And then now I have my wife who has always seen me as this pudgy seventh or eighth grader because that's when we met. and um could care less about all the other things you know when how am i being am i being a good husband am i taking care of my kids and uh are my pro- priorities aligned correctly uh, she's very quick to to call those out in a loving way and it's exactly what what i need uh, a lot of the time hey everyone this is caitlin again one of the biggest questions you receive is how do you make money on a podcast the answer that my uncle gives is you don't we set up unscriptedmerch.com to be a warehouse for products and partners to sell merch and spare items. Each purchase helps this podcast find out more and order some merch at unscriptedmerch.com. Use code unscripted20 and receive 20% off all of your orders. Now let's get back to today's episode. The other Aaron and I uh, talk about that a lot, you know, having having that circle of of people that really really care about you care enough to tell you the truth and care enough to hold you accountable because uh, you know as a quote unquote star athlete or a lot of times people are just gonna tell you what you want to hear and Mm -hmm. try to get in with you and and all the things that come with it so uh, you know I've always admired that from afar watching how you've uh, done those things to to keep yourself on the straight and narrow and it has to be purposeful i know that yeah. my in my own life you you gotta like you gotta be actively pursuing those people and pursuing the the right things because stuff's just gonna happen i mean it gets and you gotta be ready to deal with it yeah i and there's been i mean there's been a ton of grace along the way for me too you know i i would be it would be a shame for me not to mention that you know i've totally made mistakes and a lot of people they don't hear about them they don't know about them um, but I mean, those affect you, how you're playing and how you're practicing too. Um, but I think having those guys not only hold me accountable, but, but be there to love you through, you know, the, the poor game that you made or the bad decision or the mistakes. Uh, I mean, that was, those were just as big of those moments to continue to just kind of shed that, that love that, that we all kind of crave, you know, we all want, especially as, as athletes, uh, so much of our worth and value from outside is placed on how are you performing? How are, are you winning? Um, are you playing in the NCAA tournaments? And just to be loved in spite of those things was was helpful along the way. Oh yeah, no doubt, no doubt at all. Well, I was uh, doing trying to do some checking on your background and doing some my history, uh, you know, before we got you on here. And the thing that just really jumped out at me, even going back to your high school years. And you played multiple sports up mm-hmm. up till a certain point, right? And and we're even, you know, a football player, I think, and and yeah. really good one uh, at that. And yet, at some point, you decided, which like I did, in, in my high school years, that you wanted to go the basketball route. Uh, share with us a little bit about, you know, why you chose basketball. Yeah, I, first a, a quick plug for multi sports. You know, I I think it's 
I think it's it can only help people, especially at a young age. Um, it it hurts it hurts my heart a little bit seeing people kind of focus on one thing at fourth or fifth grade. I just think that the skills you learn um, just help tremendously. And I, for basketball in general, I was a quarterback, so it, it helped me learn how to lead lead men to to be accountable in those things. And then I played soccer growing up as well, and I think that really helped my footwork. And um, obviously, people love to ask me about my footwork now because of the defensive stuff. So a lot of that thing, I think, can go back to other sports. But for me, um, basketball was just, it was it. Was it. it was the love from very early. You know, my dad was a, a football and basketball coach. I was around the gym in the field all the time. Uh, but I just felt more at home at, in the in the gym. Um, I just, that, that always was where I would go to, to let off steam. If I needed to take a break, if I needed a mental health uh, day before mental health was kind of a a big thing, like uh, I wanted to go to the gym, you know, I would, or I would be with a friend and we would shovel the snow off our driveway in the middle of January to, to get some shots up and just be outside. Um, and I think those little things just really added up for me. Um, to ultimately want to do that. And I love football. I loved every part of it. Uh, I probably would have played my last year too, but my dad, uh, we had an honest conversation at some point and it was probably the right decision. But uh, I, from probably by the time I got to high school, I knew basketball was going to be it. And um, I just had to, at some point, kind of put all the chips in that basket. And for me, that was my junior year. So. Uh, that's awesome. I'm a, uh, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I'm a big believer in multi-sports as well i think uh i really think a lot of the injuries that kids have are overuse injuries uh yeah you know at an early age because playing different sports you're going to use different muscles you're going to use different things and like i said just i think overall make you a better athlete and uh, and so i agree with that agree with that totally so uh so you go through high school and uh tell us about your recruiting process you know you you obviously, I uh, looked at the stats. You didn't lose a whole lot of games in high school. Oh. I mean, I mean that's why people loved having you on their teams. You're a winner. I mean, at every level. And uh, so you get to your senior year in high school, and um, probably being overlooked still, <laughs> I can relate to that a lot. Um, was Ohio State like your favorite school? Was that your choice that you always wanted to go to? Being an Ohio kid. Or did it just kind of happen and, you know, kind of tell us, tell us the story, how you ended up at, at Ohio State? Yeah, you're, you're, you're very right. You know, I, I overlooked, it seems it, for me, it feels a little like a brag. You know, I, I honestly didn't know on a true scale where I wanted to go uh, or how high, how high level I could play. Uh, obviously, as, as a high schooler, you, you tell everyone and you feel in your gut that you can play at the highest level at a major division one. Um, so I just, I just went, I just grinded and I just, I just wanted to play. I wanted to play against good people. And I was so fortunate to be a, on a great AAU team with, with guys that weren't overlooked, if you want to say it that way, right. you know, guys that were getting recruited at, at a really high level. And, uh, that was fun. You know, I definitely stuck out, uh, on that team. I wasn't the tallest, obviously not the fastest. Um, but it was a great opportunity to play against the best people in the country. And if you're playing with a chip on your shoulder, that's that's <laughs> the opportunity that you can you can only ask for, right? I was coming into every game guarding the best players on the other team, uh, from like one to three basically. And just about every game it was good for a steal or a layup a game because I they thought I was slow and uh was only a, a shooter at that point. So um but even through that, it the recruiting kind of was slow. You know, my first offer was bowling green. I was 20 minutes from my high school. I would go up there and play open gym. But, and that was great. I loved it. But I wanted to play higher. You know, you, you always think you can go more. Uh, and fortunately, the, the first big school that came my way was Tennessee. Um, Bruce Pearl saw me one, you know, after a, a game. And that was like the first major D1 offer that I had. Uh, he brought it, took us to campus, offered, and I, I accepted pretty immediately because no one else was really interested, right? And this was my chance to play at a high level um, and actually sat on that commitment for almost a year and uh, just then started realizing how much my family meant to me, how much being closer to them meant, how they had been to everything growing up and how they wanted to continue to do that. And that's when I started kind of reevaluating things. Uh, and when I reopened, 
that's when a couple of bigger schools started coming. Uh, you know, Butler was interested, Ohio State. Butler was close. You know, I feel like the the persona that they've established at that mm-hmm. that place really fit who I was. And if if Coach Stevens would have offered the first time I round, you know, before I had reopened, I probably would have committed. And I don't know if I would have reopened. Uh, yeah. But that second time, once Ohio State came, Jared was in Jared's in my ear. Um, you know, JD and Jordan are kind of in my ear too. Uh, it it seemed like the best option for me. And uh, then slowly became very obvious. Like it was the absolute best place for me to be as a player, but for my family, for my for me as a person to be under Coach Mata and, and what he represented. Uh, so it, it ended up working out, but I, I still give Coach a fair amount of flack every time I see him that he didn't want me when I was younger. <laughs> you grew up in a social media era. So Twitter was around. It's funny, uh, my daughter's boyfriend is staying with us and I told him that Mark and I were recording with you and, and he's from Iowa. And he was like, oh, man, I love that guy in college. He's so good. You know, <laughs> so and that's a Big Ten school, a competition against Ohio State. You grew up in a, in a social media era. Was it tough? Because you were either loved or hated, I felt like, in college basketball. Yeah. Mark, obviously, social media wasn't around uh, when he played. Was it tough getting hate on social media? Um, it was not because I didn't have any. I personally didn't have any when I was in school. Um, never. It never felt like something I needed to do or should do. And then kind of speaking to what you're talking about, uh, it was very obvious that either things were going to be a little terrible and stuff I shouldn't be reading, or they were going to be too inflating and I shouldn't be reading us either. Um, So uh, I just, it was a conscious choice while I was in school. I just didn't have it at all. Um, I mean, I have a Twitter now, but to be honest, I barely on that uh, because I just have a lot of things going on. Um, but I, I would, I think it's only gotten harder. It's only gotten worse. Uh, it's, they're getting younger and younger. And I saw a little bit of the power of social media the other day. And I, I played in a, a summer league here on Sunday, on Sundays and some pros come back and it's a, it's a good time. I, I want to work out and I want to play against competition. And so people come and watch, they put together a, I don't know, 40 second clip of me playing that first week. Um, it was every point I scored. It was it was only 12 points and it blew up. And then I got text after text after text saying, oh, are you, are you going to play again? Like you look great. So you still got it. And I just remember thinking social media is crazy because I, I didn't play great. Again, it was, they were all layups, maybe a shot made, but um, how quickly you can, you can make something that looks good. Uh, but then also having to think about it and worry about it and promote yourself. I'm very glad it wasn't as crazy when I was in school. For sure. Yeah, for sure. So when you were growing up, um, Aaron, as, as a player, what were some uh, some guys that you emulated or maybe you didn't? You know, I, I it's always asked that question because I get mm-hmm. asked, asked that question and I, I never really tried to be like anybody else. I would kind of take different things from different players that I, mm-hmm. that I saw that I liked. It wasn't kind of that one guy that I, I wanted to be like, but mm-hmm. I was just curious to see if, I mean, if there were, if you watched much NBA mm-hmm. basketball and, you know, what, what were some players that you really liked and, and watched growing up? Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you, uh, you clarified that or kind of gave that safety space to, to say that, you know, there definitely wasn't one guy. I was like, you know, I want to be like this. I, I didn't watch a ton of NBA growing up. I, I got into it a lot more in college just because I think I appreciated the game more and, the mentors that I had were kind of pointing me in that direction. I mean, the one guy that sticks out a little bit is Steve Nash. And obviously I played nothing like Steve Nash, but uh, he was my height. Uh, he looked like me and he had energy that was better than anyone else on the floor. So I think there's that part of me that, that really enjoyed it. And the other guy that I have to give credit for, uh, his name is Jake Diebler. So he's an assistant at Ohio State now. He's John Diebler's older brother. And him and I, I honestly, I saw him as a, I was probably third or fourth grade and he was in high school. He dove in the, in the stands multiple times in a game. And I remember at that moment thinking, I want to be that, you know, I want to, I want to do those things that the team matters most. And I want to dive thing, dive after the ball. I want to give my all. And uh, that's, that's really the, the one guy that I was, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to follow and do what he did. 
and uh, we can argue and he likes to argue. I just, I might be a little more athletic. You know, I can, I could do a little bit more, but uh, at the base level, the foundation, it was him and growing up as a, you know, sixth grader wanting to to emulate that. And uh, we still talk about that today too. It's, it's really fun. That's awesome. I love that because that's how you played in a lot of ways too. You kind of threw your body around and it's always interesting uh, growing up, the guys that kind of you can relate to in a lot of ways mm-hmm. and just your personality, how you approach things and the, to kind of pick different different guys out that say, hey, I want to I want to be able to do that. I want to play like that. That's that's really, really cool. Yeah. The team, the, I think obviously the fans liked it, but his teammates responded to it. And I think that's what drew me in. Like they were the, he was the guy that was diving, but he was the guy helping people up off the floor. He was, he was the leader. He was the guy that everyone kind of listened to, uh, mostly because he worked the hardest. You know, he was in early, he was staying late. Uh, he just did all those little things that I, that I, I saw as a young age that mattered. And I think that's a big reason why he kind of was continually that kind of role model. I think one, uh, one other thing that jumps out, um, we both, my, my father was a, was a coach as well yeah. uh, my whole life and your dad being a coach um just talk a little bit about that i mean your per- your relationship with your dad and you know obviously he had an impact on your on you as a player um but i also know because my dad was coaching he was gone traveling I, he yeah. didn't my dad actually didn't you know people just assumed that my dad worked with me every day which wasn't the case I just kind of grew up around it. He would take us to practices, my brothers and I. And so you just kind of grow up around it. Yeah. Um, and I just, I think that is so huge in just understanding the overall game. And, and just, there's something about kids, I think, that grow up in that environment that I think, you know, I didn't have a lot of advantages in a lot of other areas, but basketball knowledge, mm-hmm. it's just like, was oozing and seeping out of me just a lot from being around having a dad that was a coach and being around the game you know I'd just be curious of your thoughts and kind of how that you felt like that how that benefited you yeah I I can totally relate to that you know I think some of my earliest memories are (laughs) at a gym uh like the first things I remember are being there and um I think absorbing things but also the stuff off the floor kind of being part of that locker room seeing the guys interact just being part of that culture um, just kind of gives you that that itch to want to do the same thing. And as I talked about, you see older guys that you want to try to emulate. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I think the exposure, always having a gym ready to ready and available to go to, you know, especially in the winter here in Ohio, like right. there's not a ton to do. But we were going to the gym, you know, high schoolers were having practice, middle schoolers were having practice. So that's where we went. And that's what I started realizing. That's where I had fun. Uh, and that's what I connected. That's how I connected the dots. Um, I think with my dad, one of the the greatest things he did was he brought me with he brought me with him when he was coaching my older brother. So he's three years older, and just having me not only just be there, but he wanted me to participate. He he wanted me to practice with them, uh, stick my nose in there, and figure out what it was like to play against bigger guys, older guys, faster guys. And uh, that's when he first he first kind of planted the seed of how impactful a defensive effort can be, um, how much control over that I had, how much, uh, how I could do that every single day. And I may not be able to score against these guys. I may not be able to do all these other things, but I could frustrate the heck out of whoever (laughs) I was guarding that day. And that's definitely where like my love of defense started. And he gave me that opportunity. Now he let me fail. He let me, miserably fail he let me know when i failed uh, in a way that encouraged me and just motivated me to be better uh and then you know as you get older you know i think he he did a good job of kind of transitioning from uh kind of being that o- the only coach but he knew i had other coaches that were teaching me and, and helping me he would do a good job of trying to pull out uh and make me think deeper about the things they were telling me they didn't try to change what what they were saying but he he was he had enough experience to know um, that that perspective and was trying to get me to think in a different way and help me see things from a different perspective. And I think that overall just continued to to pile on the, the foundation and knowledge that that you're talking about. Um, so it's been it's been great to 
to kind of look back on that because you don't appreciate it as a child. Um, but I think the more the older I get, I have a son of my own that I may or may not be taking to the gym every chance I get. <laughs> um, but I, I see the sacrifices that he made, you know, and uh, everything he did to to be there for me. Uh, and I appreciate it more now. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I have a similar type story. You know, my dad was he was kind of my coach all the way through and he taught me how to shoot and everything else. And, and, uh, I just remember being in high school and, you know, I, just human nature of players, right. We, we want somebody to be on our side and yes, the coach and I were disagreeing on, on something. I can't even remember what it was, but I remember going home and kind of complaining to my dad, you know, about it. And I just, and it always stuck with me even to this day. I mean, he just said, well, what do you want me to do about it? He's like, he's your coach. Go talk to him, you know, and you, you, you guys are the ones that have to have a relationship, you know? Uh, and that was that kind of where I just kind of fell in love with that coach player relationship. You know, that was like, you know, how special that was. And my dad understood yeah. that being a coach, you know, cause you always have the parents that are disagreeing or this and that. And here was my dad who knew more than my high school coach. <laughs> You know, and yet he was still like, you need to go, that's who you're playing for and you, you need uh -huh. to go work it out. And, uh, that was just, I just remember that to this day, how like, just, that was such a wise advice that he gave me and it allowed me to really start doing that, you know, uh, not always dad, what do you think? What do you think? But Hey, it's, I got another coach now. I got a. I got to learn how to work within his system and, and communicate and be in the point guard. You're an extension of that. So, mm -hmm. um, I just always thought that was, that was just a huge maturing process for me as a player. Not always just, uh, my dad had kind of prepared me up to that point. Now he was kind of like, now this is, it's on you, you know, to, uh, move forward with this. Hey everyone, this is Caitlin. Did you know that the Unscripted Podcast is a part of a larger group called the Unscripted Collective? The Unscripted Collective is a team committed to building websites, podcast coaching, and even has a merchandise warehouse for podcasters and organizations. Find out more at myunscripted.com. Reach out today to find out how we can help you in your organization too. Visit myunscripted.com. Now let's go back to today's interview. Well... Uh, we want to kind of transfer this conversation uh, toward our faith, uh, Aaron. And I know that's, you know, something that's been that rock solid for you. But it, for those people that are listening to you or getting to hear from you for the first time, um, we just loved it for you to just kind of share your faith story, um, mm -hmm. kind of where it started uh, to where you're at today. But the journey that God's had you on and, and just kind of whatever you feel led to share, but we'd love to kind of hear how you, how you came to faith in Christ and, and, and what God's doing in your life today. Yeah, no, uh, big reason why saying yes to this podcast matters. You know, I think this is, it's awesome that you guys do this. So, uh, so for me, you know, God wasn't a part of my life growing up for, until I got to high school. Um, as I said, we were, coaches a coach's family we traveled a lot i was playing um sunday mornings were for the winner's bracket in a tournament and figuring out how to keep going and uh, honestly we didn't talk about god we never talked about church uh, it just wasn't something my family did and uh i was i was cool with it you know i but i realized in my life when i became a freshman is when all this kind of started i came into high school uh with a few goals uh you know i wanted to start and play in football and basketball as a freshman, I wanted to be great academically and I wanted to have a pretty good social life. I wanted to have friends. I wanted to be liked. I came in thinking that was, that was my ticket to happiness, to success. And that's kind of what I worked toward. Um, after that year, all those things were, were true. You know, I started, we played well, we made, made runs in the tournament, made the state finals and, and all these things. Uh, and then, you know, we get to junior year and all those things are continuing to happen. Um, I'm doing well. Everyone's starting to really know who I am. We're a smaller school um, and we're having success sports wise. So in Ohio, that that's kind of everything. Uh, so people know who I am. I'm winning awards. Uh, school is school. I'm, I'm a nerd. So that was never really a problem. 
and you know I'm doing well socially. But when I was a junior and started realizing that I was going to continue to play a sport in in college, that's when this thought inside started growing bigger. Of it was you know you're not as happy as you as you should be, or you're not you're not as satisfied as you should be, or at least I thought I should be because I had achieved all of these things and everyone knew who I was. Uh, and that's when I really started asking, you know, if I'm going to keep chasing after a dream, is it even possible to reach true joy, you know, true satisfaction with, with a sport? Uh, because I knew I was going to keep playing. And that's when God first brought, you know, a friend into my life that uh, just randomly out of this, out of one random day, he decided to invite me to a Bible study with someone in, in school. And I definitely dodged him for multiple weeks. Uh, but finally I was like, all right, you know, I want to be, I'm a good kid. Good kids would do this. So let's, let's go check this out. So that's the first place that I started hearing, man, I started hearing about Jesus, started hearing these things. And then my wife now was my girlfriend at the time. She did, she grew up going to church and she invited me out uh, to church one day. Cause we were, you know, getting, we were dating and she thought it was a great thing to do. Her church started at 8 AM on Sunday. So uh, I dodged her longer than I dodged my friend. Um, but I think I ended up started going, really was didn't know what my family would think, but just wanted to go. And that's where it started clicking for me. Same message, same Jesus, same things about, you know, what what really is valuable in life. Uh, what are you missing? So I think it was, you know, going into my senior years when I officially, you know, accepted Jesus as the missing piece in my life. You know, everything that I was kind of really striving for in other ways. You know, I realized it was kind of in a relationship with God and I needed Jesus, Jesus for that. Um, so I did that going into my senior year and did not win a state championship, did not do all these things that a fairy tale ending, but I was definitely more at peace that year. Um, I enjoyed playing more. Uh, I only played basketball. I worked on it all year. Uh, the joy was, was there. So that, that was just reaffirming. And I think my faith really took took the next step when I got to college. Uh, a big reason I wanted to come to OSU was John Diebler. Uh, my dad had coached him when him and my brother are the same age. So I knew him since I was in second or third grade. And I came into college saying, I'm going to follow him because he was senior on campus. Uh, they had success. So everyone kind of knew who he was. So I, he, I just kind of projected myself into his shoes uh, three years down the road. And bless his heart, I, can't, I moved in on a Sunday. Monday night, first thing he invited me to was a Bible study outside of my dorm. And I, I was naive, you know, I, cool kids go to Bible study apparently in college. So from that point, from that Bible study led to uh, an action group, which was a bunch of men, leaders on their different sports. So hockey, lacrosse, all these sports across campus. They met every Tuesday night and they invited little Aaron to come out and, and see what they were doing. And that's when uh, faith became real for me. You know, these guys were, were big names uh, and they were strong. They, they had beards, they had tats. They kind of like blew up the idea of what a Christian looked like for me. And we weren't talking about putting banners up or, you know, making a name for ourselves at Ohio State. Like They talked about what it was going to be like to be a good husband. No one was married. What it was like to be a good father. Uh, what thing, how could we love those around us? How are we reaching out to our teammates? And just hearing them talk about things that mattered and things that that mattered for for life and mattered for eternity, that's when um, God really started working on my heart to just really give it all to Him and and to let my career kind of do what it will. But man, I had important things to do while I was here that had nothing to do with basketball. So that was really the furnace that I my faith kind of grew in and, and grew out of. Um, and I, I'm so thankful for that that group of guys for for being men, but also caring about things that mattered. Um, and then, you know, you leave college and everything is, I don't know if it's the same for you, Mark, but for, for me, you know, everything was easy from a community standpoint, um, a, a, a faith standpoint, because they had weekly meetings. I lived with guys that, that were believers and everything was just very natural. And then you leave and man, you're on your own trying to figure things out. And for the first time in my career, I'm not, living up to the vision I have, you know, I don't get drafted. I go to summer league and I don't play. Um, I go to a training camp and I get cut like all these things that, uh, 
that that was a, the first big test of my faith once I left of what where am I finding value? Where where am I? Um, my words have to become action now because I really am. Am I am I a terrible basketball player and I'm a terrible person or um, does God have bigger things planned? And I would have loved to play in the NBA. I would have loved the opportunity to do that, but God just didn't have it in the cards. And I honestly truly believe that he took us exactly where I needed to go. Uh, every step of the way from going to Hungary where I didn't really play and it was not a great experience to every other country I went to, uh, I met people that are still impacting my life today and gave me an opportunity to to be around people and to have an impact on them. Uh, my teammates uh, overseas, you, you get really close to your American teammates because you guys share a lot. So um, that's kind of the journey that he's taken me on. And I'm grateful for, for all the steps that we got to take. And, um, it's been great. And he's still, he's still working because, you know, med school has been hard and, uh, it's very different than playing basketball. Um, a lot of situations that you're unsure of, uncomfortable, I don't really know exactly what to do, but I'm supposed to know what to do kind of situation. Um, and I guess our biggest test coming up is, uh, residency we we don't really have a ton of say in where we end up uh, a year from now. Uh, so really trying to trust that God is kind of in control of, of where we'll be. It's been a slightly more challenging to let go because of my family, you know, my, my wife and my, my two kids. I just, I feel a little more responsible uh, having a, a four-year-old and a two-year-old kind of right. where we're going to go. And, um, but he's been gracious again, you know, he's, he's brought the right people. He's, had me read the right things at the right time to, to really trust and his track record speaks for itself. Um, even in my life, you know, wh where we've been and, and what we've done. So he's still working and I'm grateful for that, but uh, the challenges continue. Well, that's awesome. That's all. I think it's amazing. Uh, I mean, to take a, you know, go from basketball to now you're going to be a doctor. That's yeah. pretty, that's pretty amazing ride right there, but obviously God's taking you on that track and, I'm a big believer that God's in control and and he knows what's best for us and, and, uh, you know, whatever route that takes, but I know that he's also still, still using you in, in, in a big way yeah. uh, for the kingdom and, and giving you, you know, he's just put you in a different platform now than, than what you had. And yet at the same time, I think in some sense, you'll always have that basketball platform as yeah. well, particularly in the state of Ohio, for sure. Uh, because you know, you impacted so many people's lives while you played at Ohio State. But and I just want to thank you for that and appreci appreciate your, your faithfulness to the Lord, uh, you know, as you walk through the journey, because, uh, you know, it's it's tough. It's not easy, you know, for those of us, you know, in in sports, uh, you know, to be a believer, to to take a stand and, yeah. and uh, is, is not the it's not the road most traveled. Let's put it that way. And uh you know, I just want to encourage you by, you know, just letting you know, man, we love you and we're, we're thankful for your stand and your walk, uh, you know, these years. And I have no doubt God's got big plans for you in the future as well. Yeah, I, 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 I can't say I appreciate that enough. Um, you're right. I, there are challenges and uh, stands that need to be taken almost every day, uh, especially playing. And it's similar in, in the medical field. You know, it's there's a lot of a lot of talk, a lot of uh, challenging things on the horizon. So um, it's a lot of faith taking it one day at a time and uh, taking the opportunities that come in come in front of us. Because you're right, the the platform it's amazing how God continues to just use a simple kid from Ohio to to do some things. So uh, just trying to stay faithful, and it's been great to to be encouraged and to see you guys in your walk as well. For both of you is. In Ohio, I think the first thing everybody obviously talks about is your basketball, right? That's what you're known for. That was your platform. I guarantee the second thing that they both talk about, anybody talks about, is your faith. And so that's my just testimony to you guys is thank you, both of you. Mark, you already know. We talk about it every week. Aaron, you never knew probably, but I think knowing both of you and just following your journeys and your platform is very much appreciated from me. So thank you both. Thank you. Yeah, we really appreciate you coming on, Aaron. I know the next chapter of your life uh, uh, brings back a lot of memories. I know you're starting a family and got kids now and, you know, just 
be praying for you during that that time. I got four four kids of my own. My baby's like twenty four now, so that oh, tells man. you how old I am. But it, trust me, it goes by faster than you think. So like, even though there's some difficulties in there, man, enjoy it while you got them, man, because it goes by fast. I will. I will. I'm trying. <laughs> wrestling. Wrestling's the big thing right now. So I I can do that. I have energy. <laughs> Aaron, thank you so much for your time today. We look forward to the next episode and we look forward to watching your career just continue to shine, Aaron, and, and what you're going to do for the Lord. We, we appreciate you so much. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Unscripted Podcast. Make sure to review and share wherever you listen to your podcast. It really helps out our mission to encourage everyone to live life unscripted. Until next time, keep living life unscripted.